Hello! Holy shit, I'm actually back with an inconsistent bookworm within, you know, eons. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, about the reason why there's been such a huge gap for inconsistent bookworm, if I could talk about that before I talk about what is down below here. Uh, the biggest thing that I need to say about it is, <laughs> movie is a bitch. Uh, there are... Whenever uh, Megan and me were moving, it was just such a like haphazardly done thing, unfortunately. So, quick note, kids, make sure that you plan well ahead of time instead of doing it really stupidly and end up costing yourself more time and frustration than it should have. Uh, with all of that being said, the biggest problem was actually that I was having to reorganize my mangas. Uh, to put it this way, I actually still keep most of the ones I've already read. And I try to decide, it's like, hey, well, maybe I want to reread these again. In fact, sometimes I do actually reread them. And a uh, number of the ones I have actually read, I was just recently, I was like, oh, let me reread this because I don't remember this one that well, but I know something I need to do a review on. But I decided, it's like, hey, I actually got some new stuff. And I need to start reading through my back catalog. It's the best way I put it. And, of course, as you can see, we're talking about the manga I don't care that much about. Batman and the Justice League. Uh, I don't know why. I can't help it. I am actually am interested in seeing a uh, mon manganized version. I know that's not the correct word of usage. Of comic books i'm fine with the idea of doing that especially if they still stay true to the characters i actually kind of like the original batman justice league dusty has his own opinions about it and i was like okay it's not the greatest thing ever joker looks a little weird <laughs> but what else can this give me especially whenever the ending teased the coming of orm uh, those probably know him better as Ocean Master. And, I don't know, I actually kind of enjoyed this. Even though this particular volume, volume 2 of course, is like 85% a action sequence. It's just Aquaman, Batman, and the Justice League members in a fighting orm. Now, there is some ways how they kind of try to explain how they're able to Orm's able to hold his own against the likes of, say, like, Superman. And also the reason why Wonder Woman's on the cover, but she's kind of not there a lot. Though I am happy that the writer gave Wonder Woman actually something to do. So, real quick, to talk about one of my main issues, uh, the pretty much fish-out-of-water character. Uh, I don't even remember their name real well. That's how memorable they are. The main character of this who are not Batman nor the Justice League. Thankfully, they take a backseat to everything. They're, the story still revolves around the ley line energies throughout the Earth and Joker and Lex Luthor trying to work together to utilize these powers for evil reasons. It's never still explained 100% how they're able to get into this. And there is an introdu introduction to a new... Well, he was technically introduced in the last one. But they actually truly let him go. And I just gotta find him. There's a lot of Orm. Can't show him real well. This young gentleman right here. I believe his name is pronounced uh, Arahaki or something like that. They've said it only a couple times. It is a villain who's working alongside Joker and Luther, who pretty much is, seems to be the main connection between the ley line energies and how Joker is able to control or be in touch with them as much as they nor as they are now. Now, I don't mind the fact that we have introduced a very Japanese character for a very American, you know, group. Especially one that, in all essence, is it's an overpowered villain. It's kind of almost a trope of that of anime and mangas. But I don't know why. I, I didn't mind it as much. Especially even though there is a complete and utter change up on how Orm looks. And there's a little bit of a difference for some of those who have watched, say, just the Aquaman movie. 
at least in terms of how Orm deals with, you know, Aquaman or Arthur Curry in this instance. Uh, what that totally means is it just, it means that they are much closer than it originally seemed. They grew or pretty much Orm learned about Aquaman whenever Aquaman was roughly about a teenager, maybe about a young adult. And Orm wasn't just hateful or spiteful against him. He actually was quite happy to learn he had a half-brother, even though he was a dirty half-human. But he was actually quite proud of him. He wanted to know more about this kid. And it ended up, you know, hurting their relationship because of the fact that Aquaman rather, you know, cared more for surface wars than he did Atlanteans. And sure, you get a lot of this from, you know, dialogue. It's still got very, very manga ways on how they will talk to each other. And the fact that they're going to explain all what's happening, not 100% always, you know, show it. But I don't think I minded that as much. To me, it brought me back to the older era of that, of like the older. It's about 40 years now, which makes me feel really, really old. I would say like the 80s and 70s way and how many characters would just sit there and jack jaws. They would just consistently keep talking about what is happening and say it's like, well, you did this because this and this and this and this happened. Considering this is only like had best basically pulling from the original source material pretty much the only thing it keeps is the fact there is a character named batman his name is he is bruce wayne he lives in gotham and but his parents died it's keeping the basic principle of the characters but not the same universe i like that i like the fact that this is in all essence an elseworlds tale that is having that's going across multiple issues in all manner speaking now, does that mean that this book is faultless? No, there are some issues with it still. Uh, for lack of a better way to put it, the writing does still have its problems. The writing still sometimes just get a little too... I don't know how else to say it. It just gets a little too... Like, oh, we must do this for this reason. It's like, okay, thanks. You don't really have to sit there and pontificate about it i don't care guys joker is a little bit more joker ish in this particular version than he was in the last one it still comes off more it comes off very much it's jared Leto's version of joker which is not a good joker but i i will respect it for what it did and not only that, but I will still say that the action sequences are rather good. Despite the fact they seem to be able to... Superman is very easily defeated and sometimes... It's pretty much put this way. Superman gets stabbed with a kryptonite knife. It's okay. And it doesn't even say it's like, oh, well, you know, it weakens him. It says, that, oh, it takes away his powers. It's like, okay, well, that's red kryptonite that does that. But, you know, or no, not red kryptonite, gold kryptonite that does that. And then there's Red Kryptonite, which does can just be doing like random stuff to him. But it's okay. And I will still say that, you know, for the art style, as long as you're willing to accept a much more manga version of all these different characters, it's actually really well damn done. There is very few of these characters that feel like they're just completely, you know, like out of like, character proportions to what they should be and of course it is trying to draw from the new 52 look uh you can tell that from wonder woman on the cover she has more silver not gold for reasons i've yet to harmson figure out but whatever but i am thankful though that this, these don't feel like this, the new 52 characters for lack of a better way to put it especially with what they ended up doing with Superman and Wonder Woman and also, for lack of a better way, Batman and all the five billion in uh, superheroes he inspired and they have parts and everything. <sighs> Superhero comics get weird, folks. And yes, I would also be remiss to say that there is a reimagining of how Orm looks. Those who are used to, you know, the, for lack of a better way to put it, very stoic but very obviously older guy than Arthur Curry, as you can tell, 
Well, this Arthur Curry, he is clean cut as can be. And on the back here, you can even see that is our Ocean Master. The problems there can be easily seen in the fact that Ocean Master seems very young. But to be fair, considering they seem to not age at the same rapid succession of it as humans tend to, I'm willing to forgive it. Sure, and also, I would also be remiss that sometimes Ocean Master can come off a little... He can come off a bit whiny. But to be fair, that's Orm in a nutshell. Orm's always been a bit of a trouble of a villain to try and use. He just always comes off like a little bit... No, 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 it's not the way I want it to be. Like I said, that's a, both a good and bad part of Orm, but... Take it for what it is and just, you know, roll with it and just deal with it as the punches come is the best way to put it. Don't think that, oh, well, this means, you know, that he's always whining. In fact, I would say he's a lot more, he is still a murderous despot in the best way of putting it. But he's at least a lot more understandable of a murderous despot than, you know, the Orm from Aquaman. Who is just straight up a evil mustache twirling villain? Even though I love that oh, that version of him still. So, would I keep recommending this? <clears throat> Pardon me. Honestly, yeah, I still would. I'm gonna keep reading more into this, and mind you, the writer or an artist they take a little while to put these out. I think they're only on the third volume. It sounds so slow to even get to more of these. But I am thankful for the fact that, hey, there is, you know, quite a bit here. There is, you know, some real, pretty much put it, there's a lot of enjoyment to still be had throughout it. And not only that, but the action still is crisp as ever. And I'm glad there's less of a focus on, for lack of a better way to put it, anything other than the titled characters. It's always a sticking point. It's like, you don't make a Batman movie... Call it Batman and it stars Nightwing. That's dumb. I may like I like Nightwing, y'all. I want to watch a Batman movie for Batman. Call it Nightwing movie, Nightwing. Just stop. Stop everybody. So yeah, I would recommend this. Uh those who are fans of DC Comics, I think this would be a refreshing look at different things. Sure, I would like a little bit more you know, world building gives me more into this world because we do hear about there's a dead Robin. Oh, were we speaking of the uh, Jason Todd Robin that, you know, died and then came back to life or whatever? Or were we talking about a different Robin? Ooh, interesting. There is some bits of that world building, which is a good thing, but also in the bath, there's not a ton of it. But... I, I forgive it for that. It gave me a damn good action sequence, especially since the first one was more world building than anything. I'll take 85% action over, you know, oh, we're just going to keep building world. And then it's like, okay, well, I don't give a shit anymore. I tuned out. Uh, one Piece could learn a thing or two about that, I believe. But yeah, um, pick it up if you're interested in actually seeing more of these DC superheroes doing different things. You're not going to hate it, I believe, if you just absolutely didn't like the first one. I think you would actually be, you'd probably enjoy it a lot more. If, like I said, the first one, it's not the greatest introduction to things because it feels like you're kind of stepping in the middle of a story and it feels almost fan at times. This one feels a lot more like this is an actual true comic book story we're moving into. So, all right, uh, give it a check out. See what you think about it. But, hey, I got a whole stack staring me in the face, so I got to get to it and give you a few reviews about a few other things. And I think we're going to talk about something a bit on the older side. But, hey, until then, I'll see you all there. So, bye-bye, everybody.